The Dallas Cowboys added a big time playmaker to their offense on Sunday. What does that mean for them going forward? All that next. You are locked on Cowboys, your locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast locked Network, your on. team every locked, day. Locked, 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 locked on. Locked on. Cowboys. Locked on. Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by the Ultimate Football GM app. If you've ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing your own football franchise, well, this game is definitely for you. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up in the app stores. Our listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On, all in caps, in the game. I am Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. He is Landon McCool. Check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. Landon, the Dallas Cowboys traded for Brandon Cooks on Sunday. What are your initial thoughts? Oh, man, so many, right? There's so many angles to cover here. Uh, the compensation, uh, the surprise element of it. Um, what was it like think... waking up on Sunday morning and seeing that news? Yeah, that's the craziest thing, right? Being a, a West Coaster is uh, every once in a while in, in March and April, uh, there are times when you wake up in, in, uh, uh, on a, on a workday morning because uh, your daughter has j- bounced jumped onto your head directly <laughs> directly onto your head while you were asleep and uh, you, you pull the phone out and Cowboys Twitter's going nuts you try to scroll back up to figure yeah. out exactly what's going on uh, and you find out that the Dallas Cowboys have traded a fifth round pick this year and a uh, conditional sixth round pick next year. Uh, for uh, Brandon Cooks, uh, and, and you know, and I think my first initial thought was, uh, we should have we should have been talking about this, you know. I, I think because in the sense that like it, this clearly just never kind of went away, you know, uh, as as part of the conversations that they had d- near the trade line last year, trade deadline last last year. I, I think there's some a lot of interesting. We we got to talk about the trade itself and about the player, but I also think that there is a, an interesting conversation to be had about the fact that this was not being talked about at all in the Lex, Cowboys lexicon. Like we were discussing every single thing else except for that, uh, and and yeah. I think that that kind of shows you maybe a little bit of the way the Cowboys are operating now. Yeah. So first over the compensation. Yeah. It's nothing, right? Like the Cowboys yeah. tried to get this deal done at the deadline last year. Houston wanted a second round pick. Dallas was not going to give up a second round pick. Now the Cowboys ended up obviously not getting cooks last year when they might have been able to use them, but they did wait it out and it, the cost was significantly cheaper. Part of the, the trade that we need to mention is the Texans are taking on six yeah. million of Brandon Cook's $18 million guaranteed in his contract. So basically, basically the Cowboys are paying Brandon Cooks one year twelve million with a team option of one year, I think it's nineteen million or something next year. That alone is a monster win for Dallas. Yeah, huge. I mean, the compensation uh, for the trade package was obviously greatly reduced as to what Texas were offering just you know five or six months ago. But then on top of that, the fact that that the Texans are taking on that six million dollars yeah. to make that cap hit twelve million this year. I mean, this is a, a huge win. I mean, like let's 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 talk about it in comparison uh, to the other deals that were kind of floating around in the air, right? Mm-hmm. Like th- we we got a guy who's uh, uh, younger and faster than Odell Beckham. We got a guy who's mm-hmm. younger than and faster than than D Hop. Like th- this situation is is not as good close. as DeAndre Hopkins. Just to be clear, not as good as Hopkins. Not as good, not but like yeah. you know, as far as speed wise, yeah. and like ultimately, I think that's part of the problem. Well, not the problem, but some of the, the 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 issue that we had with a lot of these deals is that okay, you know, you can make an argument that you're signing Odell Beckham and that you're you're probably having you know equivalent speed. You're not getting slower, but part of the problem with this offense is that it needed to get faster. Yeah. And with someone like DeAndre Hopkins, even though he's a great player and obviously would have been fantastic. The downside that we discussed is you, you are significantly getting slower. Yeah. I think this is a situation where you get a, a guy who has been a high-end number two for a bunch of different teams. 
has got one of the most unique careers I've ever seen. I mean, it just passed, just tied Eric Dickerson for the most trades of, of a player in NFL history. And, and that's not because he's a bad player. It's be, there's a lot of crazy, weird circumstances specifically yeah. tied to the, like the type of player he is. And his he contract. Is, but that's yeah, the, other part, the, the contract. It's the contract because, and, and I think this is all tied together in the sense that this is a player who teams cannot decide or not whether he, he he wants if they want him to be their number one wide receiver, yeah. right? Like it's just like that's the issue is that they pay him because he has this speed element that's so rare in the NFL, mm-hmm. uh, and and he and he produces at a high level. I mean, he had some kind of ridiculous streak of a thousand yards, uh, I think four, five or six seasons in a row, something like that before. Uh, he had a little bit of a weird patch the last few years. And 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 I think that because of that, he's kind of this high end number two, you know, low end wide receiver one. And, and, and he's had this very weird career path. But for the Cowboys, you get a guy who fits every angle of what you're looking for perfectly. He brings the speed element. He is the kind of wide receiver two that you're looking for. He is the guy that that fits in the compensation buckets quite nicely with the cash and the trade. So uh, kudos to the Cowboys, especially for keeping such a tight lid on this. Yeah, uh, and, and then getting the deal done, and now suddenly you've you've traded two fifth round picks, uh, and and your Super Bowl chances yeah. look uh, markedly better a, a week later. Yeah. Now, to be fair, we did talk about this early in the offseason. We were talking yes, about the Cowboys absolutely. adding a playmaker, and we even said it's still probably the most likely outcome because the Texans aren't going to keep him at that salary. We know that the Cowboys are interested, and he does fit what they need. We're going to talk about his fit on this offense in yeah. just a second, but we probably should have been talking more about, okay, when does this get done? Why does it get done? And the big thing for me isn't the compensation. It's that $6 million because I yeah, I truly don't think Dallas would, would, would have traded for Brandon Cooks if they even if the that. price was cheaper – if the Texans didn't eat six million, because a one-year twelve million dollar deal is just so much more digestible than one year eighteen million for this team. Yeah, I totally one hundred percent agree. I, I I feel like that six million dollars was a prerequisite, not a cherry. Um, yes. And and I think that that was a huge part of this. I, I think that you know, to our credit, I guess w- what I was getting at was we should have been talking about this. I, I tend to think that that the a lot of this kind of D Hop Jerry Judy, uh, 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 you know uh, Odell Beckham Jr. kind of conversation uh, was kind of just put out there as, as not smokescreen, but like you know as just part of conversations. And I think the fact that they were right? yeah, I think the fact that they were playing uh, the Brandon Cook stuff was playing it so close to their chest is a uh, is an indication of just how things are different in, in Cowboys. Uh, nation i'll even go so far as to say both todd archer and jane slater who are about as two pl- as plugged in uh, uh reporters as you're gonna get on the cowboys beat both of them strongly indicated uh, before at the beginning of the season i'm uh, sorry the beginning of the weekend that nothing was gonna happen this weekend uh and 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 so i i just feel like there yeah. is uh, things are changing a little bit in, in dallas in the sense that you know the leaks seem to be uh, uh kind of being plugged a little bit more than they had been previously all right, let's talk about his fit with yeah. Dak Prescott, with Mike McCarthy, with C.D. Lamb next. This episode is brought to you by the Ultimate Football GM app. You've heard us talk about this mobile game before, and if you've, if you've ever thought you'd make a good GM, you've got to give this game a try. It's not as easy as you might think to create a dynasty. When you play Ultimate Football GM, you get to control and manage every strategic aspect of your team. As you play through seasons and lead your team to glory, trying to build a historic dynasty. What I love about this game, because I've been playing it a bunch, is it's so stinking hard. Like you play Madden, (laughs) if you play the Madden franchise mode and stuff, you know, like you can make some unrealistic trades and just build this superpower. It's not like that. Like this is, this is really going to test you because you're going to be in charge of hiring the right coaches and coordinators managing all the finances of your team, negotiating player salaries in the terms. Plus you've got free agency. You've got the draft. You've got injuries. You're even going to have like player conflicts in the locker room that you have to deal with all of this in a challenging, but realistic game world. Ultimate football GM is completely free and playable offline. So you can play on the go as you want to. And when you want to, 
Locked On Cowboy listeners get a 100% free boost to the franchise when using the promo code Locked On all in caps in the game store that is locked on all in caps. So make sure you check it out today to download the game. Just visit ultimate dash GM.com or look it up in the app stores. That is ultimate dash GM.com ultimate football GM. Start your dynasty today. All right, later let's talk about Brandon cooks in the fit with this Cowboys offense. How do you think he fits in? I, I mean, I think he's, He's almost to a T what we've been describing they need, right? A, a deep threat, a guy that can force teams, uh, uh, you know, second corner, first corner, however they want to play them, uh, to play him very carefully. Defensive coordinators are going to have to account for his speed. Uh, you know, look, I, I, I think if we're describing Brandon Cooks for, for people that are not kind of initiated necessarily, we've seen lots of these types of players come into the league, right? These kind of undersized speed guys who, uh, who can just blow the tops off defenses Mm -hmm. with their deep speed. Um, I think where he differs are two very distinct areas. One, he's 29 years old and he has not dealt with a series of lower body injuries the way that you see almost all of these speed receivers. Yeah. I I think it, I think it has to do with the fact that they're all, (laughs) I just got that. I, did, I think that they're all, uh, you know, they're all sprinters. They all they all have like track backgrounds, and because of that, like the training required to kind of keep up in, in, in the NFL, it just a lot of these guys they it, it, their bodies fall apart because it's it's tough to remain fast and durable, you know, in, in sort of a physical NFL way. And I think the other way that he separates himself from a lot of these other kind of speed wide receivers. Uh, and, and, and let me just add, the lack of injuries is also why he's had longevity. He hasn't, I mean, he's had injuries. He had some concussion stuff early, early, early in his career, career yeah. but he hasn't had like the knee that turned into the ankle that yeah. turned into the hamstring, you know what I'm saying? The lower chain kind of, you know, and that's helped maintain his longevity. The other aspect about this that I think is underrated is that he has very good hands. Um, you know, for a guy, he has a very low drop rate uh, mm-hmm. for a guy, especially for a guy that's smaller, who gets down the field. He's not necessarily a contested catch guy just no, because he's no. under 5'11 and under 190 pounds. But I mean, he is not going to drop a ball that hits him in the hands. If he gets open and, and he and he catches in the basket, he's not going to drop it randomly. Um, this this is a guy who is going to be able to step on the toes of corners, yep. make them uh, uh, scared uh, and fear for their lives. Uh, and I think the other thing key, that's key here is that this, despite being a smaller guy who's a speed receiver, he's very good with his hands in the sense that he knows how to hand fight. He knows how to get off yeah. press. And that's something that a lot of other speed receivers really struggle with when they get physical. Yeah. He knows how to get away from that. And that's why he's been able to get well, open so much. Time. And uh, unlike some of these other smaller speed receivers, you know, Deshaun Jackson or whoever you want to name, he's a really good route runner. Like, honestly, yes. I think as he's gotten older, he's gotten – excellent in that part of the game like i was watching him do some routes yesterday and it's unbelievable unbelievable how quickly he gets in and out of his breaks and how fast he can run like some speed outs and slants and dig routes and like it's the same way every single time so you're getting exactly the type of player we've been talking about for years yeah. right somebody has speed and can run routes and has reliable hands it's almost too good to be true to get this type of player uh, to pair with CD Lamb and Michael Gallup. And to me, that's the biggest thing here that we haven't even mentioned is I think Michael Gallup sometimes is a little bit overmatched as a wide receiver too. But we've seen throughout his career when he's that third guy and that kind of that third receiver option, he's awesome. And now Brandon Cooks allows you to do that. Plus, he's got the the versatility to play in the slot. So if you want CD Lamb yep. on the outside, you can do that. Or if you want to move CD in the outside, Cooks has played more than you know, 60% of the snaps on the outside. It's, it's really a perfect fit. Yeah. I mean, I think that you can move these shit, the orbit, these two players around each other. One could play in the slot and flop them in the outside. Uh, you know, I think it allows Gallup a more kind of narrow uh, path, which I think he operates better in. Like if he can yes. play that X receiver and kind of operate there, uh, I think that will definitely, you know, be a little bit kind of cleaner for his recovery uh, from coming back from that injury. Um yeah, I, I think the three of them really fit well together, especially with what you're looking to do. Because they all do uh, different and, stuff, right? Like Gallup yeah. is your contested catch down the field guy. Cooks can be the speed guy that does a little bit of everything, and CeeDee Lamb is your number one receiver that 
you know, your de- design mismatches for. He's definitely still a guy that you can like. I mean, we talk about a deep threat, but he's also a guy that you throw a quick uh, tunnel screen out to. He makes two guys miss and he's gone. Sure. Like, you know, so he has that kind of speed still. So, uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, it's about as good a fit as we could have hoped for. Uh, you know, th- like as much as, like I said, as much as the names of Odell and, and, and D hop are, are, are fantastic players and they are fantastic players as far as like fit for what the Cowboys need in their offense. I don't know that you could have, have designed a better uh, fit well, than Brandon cooks. I, I would also say it's there. He has a little bit of this Stefan Gilmore thing coming in where he's been the number one receiver for yeah. his team. Basically the last I'm looking at it now forever. Like yeah. he honestly, he hasn't been the number two receiver for a team in a long, long time. The Rams, and, maybe like I mean, I guess maybe like if you wanted to call Cooper Cup at the time, the, yeah, you know, I mean, because Cooper Cup was still ascending, is still at that yeah, point. Yeah, so you know? that's that's probably the best one, and that was 2019. Yeah. And Brandon Cooks, yeah. um, yeah, that that's probably the best the one, closest right? he's had, right? Yeah, I just think now that he's kind of getting away from having to be the guy that, hey, we're gonna stop Brandon Cooks. He's gonna get our number one corner. We're gonna game plan against him. Now you step into a role where, hey. You're going to be the number two guy and you're going to get beneficial coverage and all that kind of stuff. I just think at the age of 29, it's a perfect way for him to kind of transition into a new role. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great fit for Brandon. It's a great fit for the Cowboys. Um, it, and and it's like you said, it's it's very similar to the Gilmore situation where you're a guy, a guy who's had a very good a career as a premier player at his position for mm-hmm. multiple teams. And now he's stepping into a role where the uh, onus is not only on him. In fact, the onus is on mostly another yes. player in your room and you're playing qu- kind of a high end support role. Sure. Right. And I think yes. that that's where both of these guys have the opportunity to really like thrive at the end of their career. All right, I want to ask you about what this means for the Cowboys, the rest of the off season, the wide receivers and the draft next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The tournament is heating up, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That is bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on anything and everything from money line to point scores to three-pointers drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So don't miss a chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets. When you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on, that is FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, Landon, let's talk about the rest of the Cowboys wide receiver core. We've got the top three with Lamb, Cooks, and Gallup. Four through six is up in the air. Does... Does this make you at least feel better about Jalen Tolbert and Sammy Fahoku and some of those other guys in the roster now? Yeah, I mean, I think it kind of properly slots them into where their capabilities are, right? You're not over-asking these guys to kind of... And and to be fair to the Cowboys, we don't know that they would have necessarily done that either. I think that if if they don't make this trade, then likely we're seeing them draft a wide receiver in the top three rounds, I imagine, right? So... Um, well, that's but, my next uh, question. Do you yeah. do you think a receiver in the top three rounds is still likely? I, I don't likely. I don't know, but I think that it's something that they're not necessarily going to try to have to find a way to to kind of you know put into their draft sequencing. Right. So they're not I think, hoping and praying that Jordan Addison or yeah. Jackson Smith and Jigba fall to them, right? I, I honestly, I think that they they probably learned their lesson from last year. They di- didn't. I mean, even though they liked Tolbert and he fell to them, they probably didn't love having to wait that that kind of treacherous end of the second round yep. situation for their wide receiver to fall to them. So, I think that for them, they again would love to draft free. They would love to just kind of set the situation up where they don't feel the need to draft any p- certain position up at the top so they can draft the best player. And I think this more than compensates for that. Uh, but I guess th- it's to the point now where the question is, if a wide receiver they did like fell to them at 20, if Jackson Smith and Jigba fell to them at 26 and he's the best player available, you know, do they still feel comfortable drafting a player like that? Now that the, I know, think the room is the situation. 26 is a little bit rich to me, but if it's 58 and you have a guy, 
listen, I like Marvin Mims a lot, the Oklahoma receiver, and I know Dallas does a little bit, but maybe you draft him at 58 in the idea is, hey, he's going to compete for wide receiver four. T.Y. Hilton is, I still think, most likely just to be a one-year rental at 12 million. You draft him, you get him ready for 2024, and that's kind of what we do with that number two receiver position moving forward. You said T.Y. Hilton, but I'm pretty sure you meant Brandon Cooks, which Brandon, is I- ironic Brandon because Cooks. I – yeah, Brandon like Cooks. that's that fits pretty well, right? Like almost essentially what they would have did with Ty last year, Ty last year, except be at the beginning of the season, right? Just like a, a rental of that type of player. I, I think I don't disagree. I, I mean, I think that it because of the way the room is laid out now, you've got two guys that are obviously your clear one and two. You've got a third guy that you've paid a lot of money. You've got a draft pick that's down the roster. It would be difficult to draft somebody at twenty six unless it was a bright blinking red light um so yeah i I tend to think that the cowboys probably will draft a wide receiver i i I mean i i I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't but i i kind of think that they will i just don't think it will be you know i don't think it'd be a round one yeah yeah Yeah. uh and again it it might just depend like they could get to the third round and there's a guy that's available to them that they just never thought would be in they take him, and it's it's what it. Um, that, it could be because the 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 the, the draft's deep at that position, but sure. they won't be forcing it. I, I will say that if you had to pull holes in any of this trade or Brandon Cooks fit with the offense, is, is there anything that gives you any type of concern here? You know, I mean, I, th- look, anytime you're trading for a veteran player, there's always the 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 chance that they fall off the cliff, you know, and that, 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 that they've kind of run out of steam here. I don't necessarily worry about that as much with cooks. Uh, I think obviously his, his last season had a ton of circumstance considering exactly what was going on. In well, Houston. that he just didn't want to play after the trade deadline, which let's yeah, not blame him. which I mean, after the way things went down, I don't blame him, but uh, I no, I, I, I guess I don't necessarily see any like clear pitfalls here outside of, you know, hey, we get to training camp and Brandon Cooks doesn't seem to be running the same way that he I, had. I would been. say the only concern that I would have, Landon, is that we just haven't seen Dak be super successful throwing the ball down the field to some of these speed receivers. But what makes me feel pretty comfortable is Cooks is so much more than just a downfield vertical threat, right? He can win all game long underneath and in the middle of the field. And he doesn't even need to get, you know, any of these 30 yard, you know, 30 air yard targets. So, that's the only thing that has me a little bit concerned, but overall, I don't know how you can see this trade not be thrilled with it if you're a fan of the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's something to, to, to uh, add to the list. I would say that I think that for the most part, when Dax had quality players at that position, like that that quality has been reflected in his, his deep throwing. When T.Y. Hilton is the guy he's been throwing down the field as opposed to, I don't know, lucky whitehead or whatever the equivalent of sure. you know speed receiver the cowboys have had over the years like uh i, I think that that's made a difference um you know uh, in 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 his ability to kind of hit those guys down the field right like yeah. uh and, and so i i imagine that brady cooks will probably be similar and and let's 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 go here too brady cooks has produced at a high level Kind of despite what other terrible quarterbacks he's been playing with, and 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 you know he's been fine. I, I've, yeah, I've seen Davis Mills throwing footballs to him. Uh, you know, t- t- I like Tyrod Taylor, but I've seen him throwing footballs to him. Washed up Jared Goff and yeah, the Rams who had no uh, confidence. I, a- and Cooks was so open that like know. you know even those guys were able to get it to him. So I I I I think that's a valid concern, but I also think that. Cooks is such a high higher level of quality than the kind of player that he's used to. Yeah. As far as the shorter diminutive speed guys, I mean, he, obviously he's throwing the ball down the field to Amari Cooper and, and CD Lamb and Michael Gallup. Those are different types of players. But uh, I think that Cooks is a different type of quality of those kind of speed receivers that he's had before. Last one, last one. Uh, does this move rule out any chance that the Cowboys sign another veteran receiver this offseason? I think so. Uh, but 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 I would I would caveat it potentially with, you know, uh, well one if if one of these other top four, three wide receivers got traded like Gallup percent just sure. for some reason which is not happening which is not <laughs> happening, uh, or two uh, if the veteran wide receiver is kind of more of a down roster like let's say 
Cedric Wilson's numbers sure. weren't as ridiculous as that. If you wanted to re-sign a guy who you think can play great special teams for you, can be a really good high-end veteran, you know, uh, 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 presence in the locker room, yeah. who can play special teams as well. That might be the case. But honestly, I, I have to think that they're going to kind of clear the runway a little bit for for guys like Jalen Tolbert and Simi Fahoki to kind of earn that spot. So if I if we do see that. I would think it would be kind of closer to the regular season or at least the middle sure. of the training camp sort of situation. I, I agree with you for the most part. I do think there's one receiver out there where if he said, hey, I want to play this year, the Cowboys would say, okay. And I think it's T.Y. Hilton. I still think mm-hmm. Dallas would like to have T.Y. Hilton back. And if you could have T.Y. and Brandon Cooks doing a lot of your vertical stuff and adding speed and C.D. Lamb and Gallup doing everything else, it's a pretty fun wide receiver core going into the year. It, it it may be, you know, he only wants to play half a season, so maybe you get halfway Fine. through the season and, and, and you give him a call. Fine. Uh, all right. That is it for today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in, and thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen every day. Now make your second listen to Locked On NFL Scouting uh, show with the draft dudes. From free agency to the draft, salary cap management and more, join NFL experts Kyle Krabs and Joe Marino as they take you through what it's like to build a successful NFL franchise every Monday through Friday. Find Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Make sure you check out the Locked On Cowboys podcast on YouTube. Uh, we've got free videos up there every single day. Go follow Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier, and we'll see you guys next time.